wind is back on and we're doing some more growth. <laughs> yes. yes. The anemometers are going. We're going to do some more experiments with wind. Now, there's a big difference between how fast the wind is blowing here. Uh oh, you hit a hot spot there for a second and the wind was blowing again. We're going to do some measurements of wind speed and also wind direction. The anemometers are a good way to do it, but these things more sensitive. So go ahead and set those anemometers aside. Okay. Uh, get everybody one of these little swirly, windy, detecty things. <laughs> and then we're going to do, oh yeah, so we put these in the wind. There goes the wind blowing hard to the side. Excellent. But now, there's a bunch of boxes on the table. Let's take these. I'm going to turn off the wind for a second. And let's build some topography. Let's make some mountains. That in sounds this great. That sounds wonderful. Let's do it. So a big shiny mountain. Now, if I turn on the wind, and this happens in the real in the landscape in Colorado. Strong winds. You can see over here is blowing to the side. But if I bring your wind indicators, check them out on the back side of the mountain. What's happening? Oh my it's gosh. It's going the other way. The wind is blowing the other way. How come it's doing that? Yeah. What happens That's is the weird. wind comes in, gets pushed around the mountain, and then does a little swirl like so. Yeah, look at that. And so the, yes. the local topography can have a huge difference in the direction that the wind is going. And also the wind speed. Oh, at the top of the mountain? Oh look, it's blowing up. Can you see this? Because the wind comes in, hits the mountain, and gets pushed up. What, what do you think it'll do if I take it over to the back side of the mountain? It's going up here, how about over here? It'd be going back. Yeah. Going backwards. Oh yeah, so it's curled around the top and looped over. We'll go ahead and bring the wind down do our closing. We've seen some of the forces that can make the wind blow, but we've also seen that local conditions and local, local topography can affect the speed and even the direction of the wind. This can be a dramatic and important effect, as we'll see in the next segment. Then we'll come back, do some more experiments. Yay! If you look up at the clouds, you can see them being pushed by the wind. If it's a day with many different types of clouds at different heights, you might well see that the different clouds are going in different directions. This is usually the case. The wind blows in different directions at different heights above the ground. Imagine raising a flag on a very tall pole. Near the ground, the flag will flap in the breeze. As we raise it, the wind will probably blow it in a different direction. If we could raise it off the ground by several miles, it would hit a very strong wind that almost always blows the same direction, the jet stream. This variation in wind direction with height is called wind shear, and it can cause big problems for airplanes taking off or landing. It's easy to show wind shear, even on a clear morning. If you let a helium balloon go, it will rise and the wind will push it to the side. As the balloon continues to rise, the wind will push the balloon in a different direction. The smoke plume behind a rocket shows the same thing. The smoke at different heights is pushed different ways. When a weather report tells you that the wind is from the west, that means the wind at the surface. Higher up in the air, it's almost certainly moving in a different direction.